Now to Washington and chaos on multiple fronts at the Capitol tonight with Democrats in the Senate using their razor thin majority to shut down the impeachment trial into the DHS secretary in literally just the last 45 minutes. You're getting a live look here. It has gotten spicy on the Senate side. Listen. Are we about to set a precedent that the allegation of a felony is not a high crime and misdemeanor? That is not an appropriate parliamentary inquiry. You don't have to be Mensa material to know that it's the not Senator only will state a high crime and misdemeanor, it is a felony. Take my word when I tell you that for the Senate, that amounts to spice, folks, the drama, right? But the whole thing does mean we will not see this huge weeks-long saga go down on Capitol Hill over how Secretary Mayorkas, who you see here, has handled issues at the border. Not going to be a trial like some members of the GOP had hoped for, a trial like what we saw twice when former President Trump was impeached. So fine. Okay, Homeland Security impeachment situation pretty much done and dusted. But on the other side of the Capitol, the drama is definitely not over yet, with this guy, the Speaker of the House, facing what could be the biggest challenge to his position yet. It's this new showdown over money for Israel and Ukraine. Why? Well, some conservatives don't want to give any more money to Ukraine, and some Democrats want a different aid package altogether, the version the Senate passed. All of it means Mike Johnson could be just a vote away from a potential ouster, maybe, for a job he's only had about six months. Garrett Haig is following all of this for us right here in Washington. So, two sort of pieces to this, oh, yeah. right? Let's start with the Speaker Johnson piece, because that seems like way more of a live ball. He's speaking, I know, tonight. Yeah. He's got this vote. We're looking at live picks right now, actually, of that news conference. We know that our team members are there listening to every word. We'll bring you news once we get it. But he is now facing this kind of existential threat over the fact that he's bringing this bill that would give aid to some of uh, to, to Israel and Ukraine. Yeah, that's right. So he's used what's become his kind of go-to strategy here, which is if he takes a bill that nobody really likes on the House side and chops it up into pieces into five bills in this case that nobody really likes on the House side. So he's, he has made it clear he wants to move these pieces of, of aid for Israel, Ukraine, and so forth onto the floor in chunks. But there's still going to have to be at least one vote as kind of the starting gun for it. The problem for him, it could also be the starting gun to the end of his That's job right. Explain that, based please. on these threats. So you've got some hard right Republicans, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, late as of yesterday, yeah. Thomas Massey, who's kind of another kind of uh, Freedom Caucus guy, sort of uh, on the far right of the Republican conference, who said, that's it, they will call for his ouster. And the margins are so thin that he would potentially find himself in a position where he would need Democratic votes to survive. To keep him in office. Just to keep, well, to keep, yes. Yeah, the, the speaker, speaker the that, speakership. Yes, right, that's right, right, to keep the speakership. So not a position he wants to be in. The politics of this are fascinating. I just talked to a Democratic member of Congress on Meet the Press Now who said he's not necessarily opposed to voting to save Johnson's job, but it's going to be very dependent on how he handles this over the next couple of days. So Johnson, it's to like, mix our metaphors it, here, right? yes. I mean, there, there's that dynamic. Johnson has the ultimate high-wire high act here. He wants to pass these bills. He's spoken to the President of the United States about passing these bills. Even Senate Democrats have said they would look favorably upon this package in five pieces as opposed to one piece if it can get there. He has a very difficult job to do to try to make that happen. On now. the other side of the Capitol, we have seen the drama go down on the Senate side. Typically, the you know impeachment of a cabinet secretary might be something that all the network newscasts cover for hours on end. This one, despite Ted Cruz and what I'm told is his sort of fiery remarks on the Senate floor we're looking live at now, has been dispatched of relatively quickly. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the last time we saw the impeachment of a cabinet secretary, there were, of course, no cable networks. It was the Grant administration. But it is an incredibly rare event and one that you would think might take um, much more of the daily spotlight. Yeah. But what has happened here is Democrats yeah. always looked at, with disfavor on this impeachment. They never really thought it was real. There was no specific crime alleged. They just felt like this didn't pass constitutional muster. And they had the votes. And so what we saw here was an inverse of what we saw during the Trump administration, in which Republicans were arguing about the great constitutional importance of this. Democrats said this is purely political. We're not going to do it. Listen to the two Senate leaders on the floor today in the lead up to what became one of the shortest impeachment efforts in Senate history. To validate this gross abuse by the House would be a grave mistake and could set a dangerous precedent for the future. This process must not be abused. It must not be short-circuited. History will not judge this moment well. Abuse, I suppose, a matter of debate, but short-circuited, certainly, yes. This impeachment effort in the Senate lasted not at weeks, not days, in fact, not hours. It was dispatched with both uh, articles dismissed. The impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas is over.
Garrett Hake, uh, thank you so much for following all yeah. of it, doing double duty tonight. Thank you, as always. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.